We're having a look at a Seagate hard drive uh, that originally came out of the Amstrad Mega PC. Uh, this particular drive had a problem with uh, this little tantalum, tantalum capacitor, potato potato really, uh, that decided to catch fire spontaneously. Luckily I had taken a photo of the drive before it went up in flames. So I was able to determine it was exactly the same as this capacitor over here. So, knowing that, knowledge is power after all. Went and got some little capacitors. Um, so I'm just going to give it a quick power on just to make sure it's still smoking. Um, it should. Hopefully it won't cause any other components to go up in flames. But let's just give it some quick power. Nope, it's apparently either burnt all the way through or that particular capacitor relies on something from the IDE connector. So I guess I can't really test it in that respect. So I don't have any IDE capable computers anywhere nearby at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace that capacitor and uh, see how we go. This has been on my to-do list for a long time. I'll be glad to get it done. So just some uh, ways to clean it up. We'll see if we can get a bit of a close up on that capacitor. It's pretty badly burnt. Yeah, so as you can see, it's innards are spilling out. And there's quite a bit of charring around that area. So as that capacitor is the same as this one, I'm going to go ahead and replace that other one as well, just to be on the safe side. I mean, the other one, that yellow one there is probably due to expire as well, but it's all good. And this is one of the reasons why I have now changed my philosophy on tantalum capacitors. I no longer want to use them. Their mode of failure is a lot more catastrophic than uh, an electrolytic capacitor. So the LC475 uh, that was recently changed over to tantalum capacitors, I will be changing back to electrolytic. Radial, mind you, not SMD. Uh, SMD type, I've just seen too many fail uh, by leaking. The only capacitors I've seen leak in the radial form factor uh, the super cap on the Xbox, which could also catch fire apparently, a bit of a hazard. Um, and the uh, one out of uh, one of these PCs on the main board had bulged. It hadn't leaked yet though. Apart from that, the obvious examples are bad caps from uh, 2003 to 2004 sort of era. Yeah, but anyway, so to give this a bit of a clean up, we're going to want to use uh, something that's good at cleaning. Over here in the land of Oz, I use methylated spirits, which works a charm. Uh, in the US, you probably don't want to use this because it contains uh, something that isn't very good. Uh, methanol, I think it is. Uh, whereas this little guy, 96% ethanol. Now, the only thing it does leave is a little bit of a white residue. But because it's on a hard drive, I don't really mind. I did use some methylated spirits on the Sophia when cleaning the main board. It had a bit of a layer of sort of smoky, sticky dust. So I got rid of that using the metho, but then it left a layer of sort of a chalky, chalky film, I suppose it is. Um, so I did use some isopropyl afterward to get rid of that. Um, but isopropyls, I don't have isopropyl, it doesn't cost two dollars in a one litre bottle. So all we're going to want to do is, um, because the solder pads are covered in a bit of char, just grab some cotton tips, 
Q-tips, cotton buds, uh, I've got a million names, and just clean off the area of char. Look at that. That's disgusting. I'm going to put that in my ear, I'll tell you that much. So just give it a good clean. This, this can apply for anything you're working on, really. Especially where something's exploded. Oh, look at that capacitor, it just crumbled. So that's much better than it was. So now we'll move on to uh, the next stage, which is desoldering and replacement. So there's a couple of uh, things you'll need. Zoom out so we can get them in frame. There we go. Um, solder. Running out of solder. <laughs> uh, moist sponge. Desolder braid, possibly. Uh, I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat each side and just sort of pry the capacitor away and it should just come off the board. You can try using um, desolder braid if you want. Um, I'm not going to. And of course you need a soldering iron. I'm going with a 25 watt one this time. Put my 40 watt capacitor in. 40 watt capacitor. Soldering iron. <laughs> and there we go again. So. Of course, don't forget to uh, note the polarity. Disconnected from the uh, other side a little too easily. Which could be a good thing or could be a very bad thing. I'm gonna go with good thing though. Yeah. So once that's removed, um, we're going to see a bit more, a bit more dirt and gunk and burnt out capacitor. So get out your cleaning weapon of choice. Still got a bit of, a bit of the actual capacitor on there. It's like the, uh, one of the feet of the uh, capacitor. So, back to cleaning. It's amazing the amount of smoke I originally had when this one went flames I thought oh no oh no because it was just the machine was mostly sealed up and all this smoke just started rising from the machine and if you know the smell of burnt electronic components it's quite a nice smell in most cases depends on the component I suppose and I thought oh no the main board just caught on fire thankfully it didn't so this is a very good reason to always photograph your capacitors. Uh, 
Otherwise you're gonna have trouble replacing them if they catch fire and you can't read what they say. I noticed on the, uh, the Mega PC that this came out of, on the main board, there are quite a few different capacitors that are all lined up in the same sort of fashion. So, yeah, even though they may look like they're the same, they're probably not. So we just want to uh, just tin reflow these pads. It's a nice blob to solder on. Now, polarity. It's always important in a capacitor, unless it's a non-polarized capacitor. Tantalums are very much polarized and will explode pretty well if you put them in backwards. So for me, the line was toward the back. So we'll have a look at the replacement we've got here. So as you can see, it's got two pads on the bottom, and on the other one, one of those has fallen off. The capacitor itself has seen, whoops, a bit of it just fell off, has seen better days. So we want uh, those two pads to come into contact with the solder when it's nice and hot, and then it will attach. So let's give that a go. There's not much clearance on the uh, one of the sides there. There's another capacitor in the way, but let's see what we can get to happen. And that is completely out of focus, apologies. <laughs> but there we go. Not too bad of a job. Sure that your solder is definitely connected on both sides. Which mine is. And then you can move on to testing. I'm going to go ahead and replace the other capacitor as well, just since I happen to have replacements. Uh, with these types or any type of electronic component, the less heat you can apply, the better. Um, a 25 watt soldering iron is sufficient for this sort of thing. Personally, I'm a fan of the 40, but after melting so many pads on that Xbox and having them just turn to a charred mess, I'm gonna give the 25 water a go. We'll see how it turns out. You know, if, if it doesn't work for everything, that's fine, but it's my new soldering iron of choice. I found that the uh, side thing can actually come off and gives you a lot more space to work. So this is probably a much better example of how to solder it. So. You reflow the two points, drop the capacitor on. Now the capacitor will probably get pretty hot pretty quick, so you don't want to be touching it for too long if you can avoid it. So hold it over, apply some heat. One side. Need a better um, tip, it's one too thick. And it's sticking up in the air. <laughs> Nice new yellow tantalum capacitor. 
sitting up a little bit. The other one turned out pretty well though. Hmm. That's how you do it. Now, next step, off to the testing bench, which we're already on, but we need a, a computer. Hmm. A good idea before uh, connecting it up to a computer is probably just to give it a quick test on regular power, just to make sure the issue wasn't with it. Another component further down the track. Well, no immediate flames. That's a, that's a good thing. Excellent. Uh, for testing, we're going to use this computer, which is an Athlon. AMD Athlon. Wow. That CPU in there was my very first PC I created back in 2000. It's uh, 500 megahertz. Warranty long null and void. Got a few extra cards in here. Ethernet, USB, and some sort of capture card. Um, as you can see, it's a full blown ATX board. Asus K7V from memory. K7V rev revision 1.01. We're running a gig and a half of RAM. Yeah, so let's hook the uh, hard drive up to this cable here, and we'll see what we can get to happen. I wonder if they. I wonder if it's set as master. Oh, it's 106 meg. I must have put a 300 meg into the uh, Mega PC. It's model ST3120AT. Uh, well, I guess the other hard drive's just uh, been completely blocked. Not such a bad thing. Should have an operating system on it of some sort. No smoke coming out of it yet. Yet. <laughs> 500 megahertz does a great job at uh, Windows 98. Beyond Windows 98, 2000 is not too bad. 2000 was very stable. Oh good. Well I'm going to go find the jumper settings to see if we can get access to this disc. No, I'm going to go find another IDE cable, that's what I'm going to do. That's going to be quicker. Alright, I've got a few more cables hanging out of it now. Should be good. This is quite a good case design, it's very compact. And it fits a full-blown ATX board. Only something like 44 centimeters by. Yeah. Good, we found the Samsung that's in there. Oh, that's where that Samsung went. Still have a system on it. Please don't be XP. Ah! Why'd I put XP on it? Oh well. MS DOS five.
Oh, it's got Wolfenstein 3D. Oh, it's got Paku Paku. Let's find something to copy to it. There's nothing really on here, so I'll just copy program files. Success. Excellent. And there you have it. That is how you repair your hard drive when you got a blown capacitor. No smoke and mirrors on this one. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more videos like this.